This is the 5 minute guide to the N3 class, never built battleships of the Royal Navy. The N3 battleship was the heavier partner of the G3 class battlecruiser. As much of the reasoning behind this ship's necessity is explained in the video on the G3s, we'll launch straight into the design history. The overall aim of the design was to achieve a battleship with 8 or 9 18 inch guns and heavy armour. The battlecruisers went from K backwards, whilst the battleships would go from L forwards, again using two and three designators to refer to similar hulls, but with twin or triple turrets. L2 and L3 were designed for 25 knots top speed, a 15 inch belt, and four twin or three triple 18 inch super firing turrets respectively. The triple turret design gave you an extra gun and saved a thousand tons at the same time, with each ship coming in at 52 and 51,000 tons respectively. Due to the fact that super firing turrets require tall barbettes and on gun turrets with guns this size this is a significant increase in weight, a sub-variant of each class was prepared which had all the turrets lowered to the main deck level in an effort to save weight. However it was found that the extra length required pretty much cancelled out the weight savings and with the restrictions on forward and aft firing imposed these design principles were dropped. However, unlike the battlecruiser design, after this first wave of design iterations, the choice of turret type was not immediately made. This was because battleships were expected to engage in a much more protracted gun battle than a battlecruiser, and although a triple turret design gave more firepower, a twin turret design meant less of the ship's firepower was lost if a turret was hit and disabled. And if you happen to think the L2 design is somewhat familiar, for those of you who play World of Warships, it forms the basis of the Conqueror class tier 10 in that game. Now the M2 and M3 followed, and similar to the J series designs for the battlecruisers, brought the turrets up around the bridge with the engines at the rear. Their speed would be lower at just over 23 knots, and between the concentration of the Citadel and the smaller engines, these designs saved 4 to 5,000 tons compared to the earlier designs. At this point, the greater weight savings and increased firepower were now quite apparent, and the triple turret design was selected to move forward for further development. This would be the N3. The N3 design would have a top speed of a relatively pedestrian 23 knots, but at 48,500 tons displacement and 820 feet long, they would have been pretty vast ships. Armament would consist of three triple 18-inch turrets, two super-firing forward of the bridge and one aft, with a secondary battery of 16 6-inch guns in twin turrets, mounted in four sets of super-firing pairs, one pair either side of the bridge and one pair either side of the engines. Six 4.7-inch anti-aircraft guns and four 10-barrel 40mm 2-pounder guns made up the rest of the weapons, except for the obligatory pair of single underwater torpedo tubes. As with the G3s, these ships would have an all-or-nothing armour scheme, with a belt 15 inches thick, angled at 25 degrees. Due to differences in material quality and the angle of the belt, this was a level of protection that not even the Yamato would actually match. An 8-inch thick deck likewise provided a huge amount of protection against incoming plunging fire. The turret bases themselves would be 18 inches thick, and like the G3s, the hull would have a two-stage torpedo protection system with integrated air pumps. Although relatively slow by later standards, these ships would have carried superior protection and equal firepower to the Yamato class, losing out only in the speed department, which isn't too bad an achievement for a ship that's 20,000 tonnes or more lighter. As their design took longer to establish than the G3s, they had not yet been officially ordered when the Washington Naval Treaty made their building impossible, and they were cancelled. But as with the G3s, their legacy lived on, the O3 design combining lessons from the two in order to produce the Nelson class, which will be discussed in its own video. Compared to the G3, the N3 was undoubtedly by far the more powerful vessel, but whereas the G3 stands out compared to the Lexington and Amagi classes as a much superior design, the same is not strictly true of the N3. Now, compared to the Tosa, Key, or even the number 13 class, the N3s have superior firepower and infinitely better protection, uh, the Japanese ships having armour weaker than even some World War I German battlecruisers. But these ships would have been 3, 5, and 7 knots faster, respectively, assuming that they were built. Although their lesser firepower, and in the first two cases, smaller guns, 
meant that dictating the range would not work especially to their advantage. It would allow the Japanese battle line to disengage from the British one at will, unless they were tied defending a fixed position or a slower ship. One suspects, however, that their relatively minimal armour would not have allowed them to survive a gunfight long enough to re retire in good order. The 1920s South Dakota design makes for a much more interesting comparison. The N3 and the South Dakota were of a similar speed. The N3 has bigger guns and far better protection, but the American ship has significantly more guns, 12 versus 9, and the long barrel 16-inch guns have considerable firepower for a gun of that calibre. A fight between the two would largely, I suspect, revolve around whether the greater number of American shells could find something like the fire control system or the bridge of the N3 to stop it firing accurately, since its armour stands a pretty good chance of protecting its citadel, or if the numerically lesser but individually more powerful British shells could punch through to something rather important in the South Dakota, such as a magazine or the engines. Overall, however, the slow speed would have been the biggest issue going forward. A modernised G3 would have been a queen of the seas in the Second World War, whilst a modernised N3, although a veritable floating fortress, would have been much less use in hunting faster ships like the Bismarck or the Littorios, and would likely have been relegated to bombardment and super heavy escort duties. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or a suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.